When I think of primetime soaps, I think of three, and we've already covered the two big D's in Dallas and Dynasty. So now we had to cover the third part of the trifecta, Falcon Crest, the more refined soap, if you will. Set in California's fictional Tuscany Valley and revolving around the struggle for power and control of that valley between two families. Two very wealthy families, the Geobertis and the Channings. Shall I serve this brandy after dinner, Miss Channing? Why wait? Pour it on her now and light it. Airing from 1981 to 1990, it was certainly one of the most popular primetime soaps of the 80s, even if it didn't set out to be one, as creator Earl Hamner Jr. did not intend to create another primetime soap. But by season two, they scrapped the self-contained episode goal and began the long running drama. <laughs> Perhaps he did. And I'm your dramatic host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're heading back to that vineyard and those castles to see what the cast of Falcon Crest got into. As always, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more cast rewinds like this. Jane Wyman. Angela Channing is the family's powerful matriarch who is constantly scheming to keep her family's winery in control. She is a strong and determined woman, but she's also very manipulative, which did carry over to the actress's control over the show itself. Reportedly, Wyman was as ruthless as her character on the show, and former co-stars have claimed she drove him off the show. You know how pig-headed she can be. I wonder where she gets that from. But hey, maybe she just got carried away with her Angela Channing. Jane first began acting back in 1932, and boy, what a career she had, with her big break being 1937's Public Wedding. But she gained critical attention for 1947's The Yearling, earning her first Oscar nom. Then the following year, she took home the Academy Award honors for her unforgettable performance of a deaf mute in Johnny Belinda. The 40s and 50s were really jam-packed with tons of A-list films for Jane, before she eventually made a transition to TV, appearing on shows like Checkmate and Wagon Train. But she said of the next period, quote, something happened in the 60s. It seemed that the time didn't permit women to be part of it, except in a sort of secondary sort of way, which I resented. So she decided to semi-retire in 1962, a semi-retirement which she came out of for Falcon Crest which would be her second to last acting role and one of her most influential, earning Golden Globe nominations in 83 and 84 and winning that second time, beating two powerful ladies from Dynasty in Linda Evans and Joan Collins. I guess the Dynasty was over. In 1989, Jane collapsed on the Falcon Crest set and was hospitalized due to complications from diabetes and liver issues. She was advised by her doctors to quit acting, but against her doctor's advice, she returned to the show for three more episodes. But the final season of Crest is the only one that Jane doesn't dominate the screen. Her final acting appearance was on the show Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman in 1993. Jane Wyman was married five times, the middle husband being President Ronald Reagan throughout the 1940s. The couple had three children together, and the great Jane Wyman died in September of 2007 at the age of 90 at her home in her sleep from natural causes. Lorenzo Lamas. Lance is the black sheep of the family, Angela's heir and grandson, once a rebellious teenager constantly getting into trouble. Well, everything's not all right, Grandma, but I can't keep running home to you every time something goes wrong. He eventually settles down and becomes a successful businessman and ladies' man. Lamas began acting in the late 60s with a pretty quiet career until he managed to secure a last minute non speaking role as a jock in the 1978 musical Grease. And he guest starred on various shows like Sword of Justice and Fantasy Island. During his Falcon Crest tenure, he was landing film roles too, like 1984's Body Rock, which was very poorly received. he'd end up winning the Razzie Award for Worst Actor. Yikes. 
He also performed a song for the film's soundtrack, which actually performed surprisingly well on the charts. In the last couple decades, he's been mainly acting in B-movie action flicks, including the Snake Eater trilogy, 1995's Gladiator Cup, and playing the lead role of Reno Reigns in the series Renegade. Just in 2022, we saw him on the show Sons of Thunder. And today at 64 years old, he's got a lot on his hands, but that's just his personal life. Lamas has been married five times, but none of those have stuck except in a very strange way. His fifth wife, who was 30 years younger than he, and one year younger than his daughter, Shane. Well, his young bride actually carried a baby for Shane, leading to the daughter's second child. What a complicated situation. And coming from a guy who one night, despite having a somewhat open relationship with his current girlfriend, spent a night with the Playboy cover models, the Barbie twins. Yeah, this guy has some stories I'd like to hear. David Selby. Richard Channing is the illegitimate son of Angela's ex-husband. He inherits most of his father's shares, so with his fortune and power, he seeks revenge against both Angela and Chase for treating him like an outcast. You're becoming a nag. Mom. Aside from Falcon Crest, you may know him best for his debut role into Hollywood, playing Quentin Collins for three seasons on Dark Shadows. And after it was canceled, he'd reprised the role for the second feature film based on the show, Night of Dark Shadows. He went on to star alongside Barbara Streisand in the movie Up the Sandbox in 1972, and appeared on some great TV shows like The Waltons in 1974 and the crime drama Kojak in 1976. David often plays villains so well, and for the final season of Flamingo Road, he was great as Michael Tyrone, just before snagging his Falcon Crest gig. David is also an accomplished writer, having published several works in addition to a book called My Shadowed Past of course, chronicling what it was like to work on Dark Shadows. Today, David is 81 years old, and we last saw him in an episode of NCIS New Orleans in 2020. He's got one film in the works called Todd Tarantula, and he and his wife have three children together, one of them named Jameson Selby, named after a character on Dark Shadows. Susan Sullivan Maggie Gioberti moves to the Falcon Crest Vineyard after her husband dies, and she quickly becomes involved in the family business. Maggie is strong and determined and is not afraid to stand up to her family or other residents of Falcon Crest. Maggie, I have tried. Then try harder. Perhaps that's why her character was canned and she was fired from the show after season eight. Sullivan first stepped onto the scene in the 60s and never stopped acting on TV. Her first big break was over 300 episodes of A World Apart in the early 70s. And at that same time, she was also in over 200 episodes of Another World and that is out of this world successful. Her TV career is just dynamic. The 1990s brought seven episodes of The George Carlin Show. Maybe I ought to get a smaller bag so I don't have to wait so long to come back <laughs> to tell you how he is. And then she's shown bright as Kitty Montgomery on the sitcom Dharma and Greg. Just recently, we saw her on The Kaminsky Method and the Tim Allen-led Last Man Standing. Today, Susan is 79 years old, and for such an established actor who was once a Playboy bunny, she's also got a pretty good-sized Twitter following, too. Abby Dalton Julia is another one of Angela's daughters, the chief winemaker of the biz. Abby Dalton first stepped onto the scene in 1957 and made her big break on the show Hennessy in the late 50s, which earned her an Emmy nomination. And as that one ended, she transitioned into the Joey Bishop show, playing the role of Ellie Barnes, the wife of Joey Barnes. Abby thought she had a big break when she was cast in the pilot for what became Barney Miller as Barney's wife. But this version of the show was rejected by the network, and the new version had Abby's role recast to Barbara Barry. And we have an entire deep dive into that one if you wanna see what Barry got into after Barney Miller. Following her exceptional Falcon Crest role, she continued to guest star some in shows like Hotel and Murder, She Wrote. Her final acting role was in the 2008 horror film, Prank. But Abby Dalton died in November of 2020 after a long illness. The actress was 88 years old. Robert Foxworth. 
Chase Giaberti is the son of Jason and eventually comes to claim his inherited portion of Falcon Crest after his dad dies. Foxworth actually replaced Clue Gulliger for the role of Chase Giaberti, and Clue just passed away in 2022 at the age of 93. But back to Robert, he began his career in the late 60s and 70s, discovered at Washington DC's arena stage. And thank goodness he got this primetime soap because he was offered the role of J.R. Ewing in Dallas, which he took turned down. Yikes, what a miss. I almost killed you once. You want to give me another shot at it? We saw him in several episodes of the show Men at Law in the early 70s. Another highlight is his starring role in Gene Roddenberry's 1974 The Quester Tapes, as well as a six episode arc on HBO's Six Feet Under. Into the 2000s, he began delving into more voice work. And today at 80 years old, he's gotten very comfortable behind a mic as he voices Ratchet for all of the Transformers movies. Echo officer, Ratchet. Mm, the boy's pheromone level suggests he won't to mate with the female. And he and Elizabeth Montgomery lived together for over 20 years before marrying in 1993, a union which could only be enjoyed two years before Montgomery unfortunately passed away. His son, Bo Foxworth, is also an actor. Did you get a look at the guy? Nothing. I was too damn scared. Well, that'll do it for now. And if I missed one of your favorite Falcon Crest actors, get in the comments and tell me who. We can always do a round two. Heck, it's a soap opera. It's a prime time soap opera. Okay, it's a drama. Whatever it was to you, it was a great TV show. So now it's your turn. Which prime time soap was the best? Falcon Crest, Dallas, Dynasty, or another? What do you think would have happened if Robert Foxworth took that Dallas role? Would he have been a better J.R. Ewing? I look forward to reading all your Falcon Crest memories in the comments below. Before you go, please hit that thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.